And uh, we'll, I, I think tonight I'm going to say something about uh, Monday night. We had a Zoom meeting with uh, the Dominican Republic, and Brother Rodriguez, and the people down in Brownsville area in Mexico. I don't, I don't have any volume. Um, hold on a minute. Let me. <clears throat> Smith's having a hard time here. Let's see. I can get this. I'll leave the door open. I can hear you. See if I can get her. Why you don't have any? Excuse me, just a minute. I'm trying to get my wife's volume set up here. There it is. Recording in progress. You have to go in the other room. You're too close in here. For Excuse me. Um, anyway, so Monday night, <clears throat> I had a couple questions and I thought, well, I think I'll cover them again um, here with the Thursday night. Had two questions. One was they one wanted me to explain our position with, <clears throat> uh, with John the Baptist's ministry for today. How does it apply to today? And um, I told him, I said, I've, I've never heard anybody talk on that other than Brother Ray Linegar. And he always applied it this way, that <clears throat> in, in, a, in an analogy that uh, like John the Baptist was, he rejected Herod's authority because he was, married wrong uh, under the law and, and he got his head cut off and then his disciples all went to Jesus <clears throat> and uh, Brother Leninger always looked at that this way that down here in the restored church when the beast speaks that the Baptist people uh, he said, the Baptist people will never join the beast system. And when they refuse to do that, they'll get their head cut off, not literally, but the, their, their organization. Uh, <coughs> they won't be able to buy or sell, in other words. And so, uh, and when that happens, that the Baptist people will, will come to the body of Christ. And that'll be the first greatest influx that we'll have. I, I can see that analogy. Uh, and, and I think that it, it's, that's very possible what will happen. But as far as there being a John the Baptist ministry, um, I, don't, I don't see any anything like that. That was a forerunner to Christ back then under the law. And so, but I do, I do think that uh, our first, probably first influx after the um, uh, church is restored and after <clears throat> uh, the Baptist people, uh, our organization leaders reject the beast system and won't take the mark neither in their hands or in their forehead. So, uh, and then the people will begin to find the body of Christ. Of course, once the church is restored, the body of Christ will be manifested by God in a much greater way. Right now we're <clears throat> almost like the David on the backside of the de desert, you know, waiting for God to 
unveil us to the to the rest of his people uh, in Christianity and of the world in, in whole uh, as a whole, except the scriptures that we may even use here tonight to show that, you know, when the Bible talks about all, it's not always talking about all. It's God is not going to deal. He's not trying to save this whole world right now. Uh, he's just trying to save all of those that he has dealt with in the Gentile world <clears throat> to harvest this world of Christianity that he has planted and <clears throat> that um, um, uh, and to make up the remainder of his pride. And so <clears throat> there's a whole world of, of people in um, And during the thousand years that we know is is the the um, <clears throat> millennial reign that won't come in to the body of Christ until the thousand years. There's certain, there's nations of people <clears throat> that God hasn't uh, reached out to yet. It'll take it'll take that. Uh, that ministry down through the thousand years, which brings us to the second question. They wanted me to talk about the restoration of Israel. And of course, uh, a lot of people, uh, and, and we in this body have taught for many years <clears throat> that God would restore Israel in the uh, in the end of the Gentile world as a nation. <clears throat> I, I, uh, I've adjusted that some in my thinking, and I, I know that Brother Leninger uh, had adjusted his thinking on it also uh, several years before he passed away. And that is, and I'll explain it and give some scriptures on it. Uh, I use the uh, the type of Elijah and Elisha in the Bible. In in the church here in Little Rock has has heard me many times uh, go over that. Well, I'm, I don't know if I'll say many times, but at least a few. Excuse me for my. I've got a little bit of an allergy here tonight. And I'm trying to drink a little bit of coffee. Hope I can clear my head up a little bit. <clears throat> but <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and so <clears throat> I'm going to try to explain it. Maybe I hope the Lord will help me explain it better in a way that I ever have before. Uh, uh, I think I was able to explain it better Monday night um, to the brethren in the Dominican Republic. Um, so uh, let's let me let me uh, I'll, I'll I'll go ahead and share my screen here um, and give you some scriptures. Um, <clears throat> I noticed Monday night, whoever talked, I think right now I, I can see y'all, but whoever talks when the screen is being shared, that's who you can see. You know, uh, for example, Brother Painter say something so people can see that you'll come up. I think you'll pop up. Yes, sir, that's correct. That's what I witnessed also on Monday night. Well, <clears throat> so brother, that's the way it worked Monday night when I would talk, you could see me. And then when brother Green, Emilio Green would interpret for me, you could you would see him and hear his interpretations. <clears throat> so I, I'm not actually seeing all of you. I'm seeing you on a more minute screen, but I could open it up wider to see everybody. But and if I do that, then I won't be able to see the Bible. But 
here's the scripture I want to show right here in first uh, in uh, first chapter of Revelations, uh, verse seven. <clears throat> it says, "Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him." and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. Now, here's, a, here's an example of what I was saying, that when it says, every eye shall see, well, every eye <clears throat> um, is not going to see. That's not talking about every eye of every person on the face of the earth when he comes again the second time any more than Everyone, every eye didn't seem, even though the scriptures show, do show that he was heard in all the world. He, you know, and that was that Jewish world <clears throat> where he went <clears throat> and <clears throat> appeared, <clears throat> excuse me, during the early church, his ministry that. He was manifested to all of those that God sent him to be manifested to. All those people did see him. They saw the manifestation of the operation of God. They didn't see him in person, and they won't see him in person down here for the most part. There may be some leading apostles. There may be a few people that are able to witness the Lord personally literally appearing to them, but overall, <clears throat> the way you're going to see God, the, 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 the Lord Jesus Christ, is you're going to see him in manifestation through his ministry and his people <clears throat> with a full seven-fold light. That's how you're going to see God in his, in his second coming. Like John said it this way when he said, Behold, what manner of love the Lord has, God has bestowed on us that he would, <clears throat> we would be called the sons of God. And he says, um, let's see if we can just go to that right quick. Let's see. Mm, that would be in 1 John 3. I don't have that scripture right here to pull up, but I'll pull it up for us. First John three, <clears throat> right here, first verse. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed on us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we, we know that when he appeareth, now that he's that's not talking about him appearing. I can't see that at all <clears throat> because he did not appear literally to everyone in the early church. When he shall appear, we shall be like him, for he shall we shall see him as he is. Well, when he appears, that is the Lord appear, appearing. In, in overcomers, when the Lord actually appears and makes himself fully known. <clears throat> uh, the, the Lord, let me, let me, I've said this before, but I'll say it again to hear tonight that the Lord could appear today to any one of you. He's capable. The Lord can appear to anyone he wants to that will not make you an overcomer and you will not be like him just because he appears to you. That's not the kind of an appearance that's going to make you like him. He is going to have to appear in your character. He's going to have to appear in your, uh, <clears throat> you know, in, in your behavior. He's going to have to uh, you're going to become like him. You'll see him as he is when you are fully uh, able to uh, recognize the character of Christ and that that is 
uh, made a part of you. That's the kind of appearance that the, that the Lord's going to appear. And then he says in verse three, every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even to his pure. Now, let me go back to my thought that I mentioned about the type of Elijah and Elisha. The, <clears throat> the, the type uh, of the Elijah ministry um, came about in, 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 an, um, in type in the early church and that the Elijah ministry has never ceased. We're still a part of in type of the Elijah ministry. And if you look at the, the, his, the story of Elijah, you'll see that, um, uh, <clears throat> you know, he prophesied that it wouldn't rain, a uh, great famine would come. And, uh, uh, and that happened back there literally, but that's a picture of the falling away of the church. And <clears throat> um, and the condition from uh, what was it three and a half years that he prophesied that it wouldn't rain. It doesn't say that in First Kings. <clears throat> Um, let's see if somebody maybe can help me. I, I really didn't have, I didn't intend to, to, to say much about this, but let me see if I can uh, look in my notes right quick. <clears throat> I think I can probably find it pretty quick. <clears throat> um. um that um, in James, that's what I'm looking for. The scripture in James, let me go down here and see. This is a note that, that I've got on the type of, of Amalek. So one of you brothers may be able to help me find it even quicker. It's in James, it's in, it, it tells in James that he, James stated that he prayed that it wouldn't, or prophesied that it wouldn't uh, rain for three and a half years. I thought I had that scripture here in these notes, but I may be, I may be wrong. Somebody look it up for me right quick while I'm looking and one of us will find it. Yeah, I'm not finding it in these notes, so. <clears throat> See if I can bring it up real quick this way. Here it is. Um, five seventeen. Right here, Eli, Elias, let me move the picture. Right here, Elias, which was Elijah, was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. That's the, that prophetically, if you take that, what he said there, and it was three and a half years back then under the law at the time of Elijah, but the three and a half years also prophetically is 42 months, which is the same period of time or 1260 years that the Catholic church was uh, the beast in control for 1260 years over the earth. And so in type, in type here, Elijah <clears throat> prophesied of the, the dark ages of the Gentile time. And I'll, I'll show you why I'm saying that is because after he did say that, and then finally after that three and a half years was up, he told 
uh, Ahab, he met with him and he told Ahab, he said, uh, meet with me on Mount Carmel. And he challenged Ahab to bring uh, Jezebel's prophets. I think there were, wasn't it 450 prophets of Ashereth and Baal that met him on there on Mount Carmel. And, uh, and that's a picture, that picture, that literally happened back there, but it's a picture of Martin Luther challenging the Catholic church uh, it, down in the end of time and the, the Protestant movement bringing a challenge and God stood with the Reformation and against Catholicism and Catholicism was wounded. Uh, they, they, uh, the Pope did lose his rule after 1260 years over the world. And after that, <clears throat> you know, or, you know, after that challenge, then Jezebel said, I'm going to kill you, Elijah. Eli Elijah, not Elisha, but Elijah. And so Elijah took off running you know, fearful for his life because he was, a, a, they pronounced death on him. And that's when he laid down under the juniper tree and went to sleep, you know, and I've always said the juniper tree, it, it represents the word of God. It's an evergreen. And that's the only place those reformers could find any rest. I'm talking about rest from the persecution that was uh, upon them. And he laid down and went to sleep and an angel woke him up and said, you know, there was a cruise of oil. I mean, there was a cruise of water and a cake. He said, wake up and eat this. And he woke up and ate it. And then he went back to sleep. He must not recognize this guy was an angel from heaven. He, he, you know, it must have looked that much like just a regular human. And I don't know why he thought he found him there under the juniper tree. It don't give us very much but I mean, I know if I was running from Jezebel for my life and they put, I knew people was out to kill me and I was asleep under a juniper tree and a guy woke me up, I, I, first thing I'd be thinking is God's fixing to kill me. And so he'd have to have settle me down a little bit and tell me, no, I'm not here. I'm on your side. I'm here from the Lord. And then, you know, he'd probably bring my attention to a cruise of water and a cake. And he said, look, I want you, you the Lord wants you to eat this. And so he ate it. <clears throat> I don't know if then the angel went away or what happened, but in, they evidently didn't do too much business after that because he goes back to sleep. So he must have been pretty tired. So uh, he goes back to sleep, and then here comes the angel again and wakes him up and says, eat this and drink this. You're going to need it for your journey. And I've all and his journey was to go back to go to Mount Horeb, where the original promise of life was issued by the Lord to Moses. And so uh, I've always said that those two feedings, those two feedings that the angel gave Elijah was the a picture <laughs> type of the Pentecostal, I mean the Protestant, and Pentecostal movements. We have needed those two feedings to bring us to where we're at on our way to a restored church. And Mount Horeb is a type of a restored church. Um, when, Mo, when, when Elijah got there, he went up into the top of the mountain and went into a cave, which is a picture <clears throat> of the restored church of the body of Christ. He was, um, he was there. And of course, y'all know the story, you know, um, rock, the wind began to blow. Y'all heard me on this, the, the winds blew so hard against the mountain. And that's the mountain of Christianity. A mountain in prophecy always, Rep, our type always represents <clears throat> religion. It's higher than the earth. You know, that in other words, religion is an influence over people's lives. 
That's why hills and mountains represent religion and prophecy. It's it it's a it's a higher influence than just you know the ungodly, just the flat earth is what that's a picture of. And so the the winds began to blow and break the rocks against the mountain. <clears throat> and the mountain is being broke up. Uh, even today, but not near like it'll be in a restored church. You can see the wind blowing right now. The winds, the four winds we've always interpreted as being the civil powers, the financial powers, military powers, and religious powers. And those winds, every one of them, all of these <clears throat> winds are... are uh, powers that are blowing and breaking up. It's breaking up everything. It's breaking up civil powers. It's breaking up uh, military powers. It's breaking up uh, in, uh, um, financial powers. It's breaking up religious powers. <clears throat> and it will continue to do that and much more so once the church is restored. And then after the wind blew, then there was an earthquake. To shake it. And God will. And, and remember, the Bible told, tells us that. Um, let me let me mute Brother Paul. He don't know his 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 microphone's on, and we can hear it. So I muted it. So, <clears throat> um, so uh, the 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 earthquake is a shaking. You know, I mean, you can see these things coming if you're if you're looking at, at things with a spiritual mind. You can see even this pandemic. I, I am confident that God's in this. It's He's shaking the world up. It's now. I don't think that's the earthquake because I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think the earthquake shaking. I personally think that's the America falling. I think America will be judged before. Uh, it's over with, and, and right at the time that the church is restored, America will play a great part in the beast being set up, but it'll be short-lived. Their dragon power will be short-lived, and they'll be turned back over to the Pope, and America will be judged and, and fall, and that's going to shake the whole world up, and that's what I see. Um, you know, I'm I'm, of course, I'm open to, to the Lord and to what else uh, these things could be, but I think that we should be looking at something, and, and I think I've got good reasoning behind that, but I don't have time to go into that tonight. If you got questions on it, you can ask me later, and I'll, I'll work on it, but so I think there, you know, there'll be an earthquake. If you remember, the Bible said the Lord wasn't in the he wasn't in the wind. He wasn't in the earthquake. He wasn't in the fire. The fire's next, judgment. Well, I'm here to tell you that God brought every bit of that about. It's judgment of God. But he wasn't in that for Elijah. It wasn't going to hurt Elijah. It wasn't going to affect him. It affected the mountain. It didn't affect him in the cave. But then finally, he speaks in a small, still voice, and Elijah hears the voice of God, and, and uh, he wraps himself in a mantle and said, Hear my Lord. And the Lord speaks to him and says, I want you to anoint Hazel, king over Israel. I want you to anoint Jehu, king, I mean, I'm sorry, Hazel, king over Assyria. Um, I want you to anoint. Uh, Jehu, king over Israel, and I want you to anoint Elisha to take your office. Now here's where Elisha comes into play. After he gives, he gives, uh, and here's what he said. He said, those who Hazel doesn't get, Jehu will get. Those who Jehu doesn't get, Elisha will get. And he's showing in, in judgment, there's a civil power that back there. The, uh, that civil power was, was Assyria. 
Jehu was over Israel, it lets you know that civil powers in this world and the end of this world and Israel are going to play a big part in the judgment of God. And then uh, Eli Elisha. And that, that Elisha is a picture of a Jewish ministry that's going to, and that is a telltale mark. You can look for it. Uh, here we're talking about the restoration of Israel, but how is it going to come about? And that's what I'm trying to, um, uh, to explain here tonight is how, what the Bible is talking about in the restoration of Israel. Um, so, uh, uh, Elijah comes down off of the mountain. And when he gets down off the mountain, he finds a young man plying with 12 yoke of oxen, who was Elisha. And his mantle, which is just his cape or upper coat or, you know, covering, <clears throat> that mantle touched that young man. And when it did, he dropped his yoke of oxen and ran after Elijah and said, I have to follow you. Let me go and kiss my mother and father goodbye. Now, that's a picture of the Jew that is still plying with 12 tribes of Israel. They still feel today they're still an antichrist group of people, and they still feel like that Jesus was not their Messiah, and they're still working and trying to maintain the law of Moses until the Messiah comes. But they, their forefathers missed it. and. Can you imagine here, down here, there is, in, in this Elijah ministry, which we're still a part of, we're still a part of that Elijah that got those two feedings, that part of the Reformation group that had to run from Jezebel or the Catholic Church where persecution many were martyred of. And so we're still, uh, we're still, uh, under the Elijah ministry down here, but down in the end of this world, uh, we will, we will, uh, we, our mantle is going to touch the Jew. And <clears throat> so, uh, so let's look at how that works if we follow the type. Uh, so Elisha goes back and kisses his mom and daddy goodbye. He he takes the harnessing of the 12 oxen, burns it, kills the oxen, feeds it to the poor, and then he takes out after Elijah. And Elijah keeps telling him, you know, the Lord wants me to do this. You need to stay here. Like, uh, what was the first thing that he told him? The Lord wants me to go to Bethel. You know, that's where Jacob saw the ladder of angels ascending and descending, you know. Uh, that's, uh, and, and so here, this Elisha ministry that, that what you can look for, and I will say this much that I, I feel like that the Jewish ministry that God's going to restore will take place first right here in America, not in Israel. I think we need to get our focus off of a nation be restored. God's not interested in a nation as much as he is in uh, those that can see him and hear him being restored to the body of Christ, being restored to the call of God, what God has uh, elected them for. And I'll go this far to say that uh, in the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, the rich man and Lazarus is, that's a parable, and that the picture is the rich man was the Jew, and Lazarus was the Gentile. And uh, 
there was left after the rich man died and went to hell. And that's not a literal hell. That's a hellish condition. Israel, ever since they rejected Jesus Christ, has been in a terrible uh, condition without God's help, turned away from God. But God's gifts and callings are without repentance, and God has held them in what he called in that parable a great gulf between the Jew, or the rich man, and Lazarus. There's such a been a such a great gulf that we couldn't we we've not been able to reach the Jew, neither has the Jew been able to re, to reach us with their message, and but God in His I'll call it His manifold wisdom, God has held the Jew in the place of the Old Testament. They know more than we know about the Old Testament. They have hashed it over for almost 4,000 years. It's been handed down to them. And uh, the law of Moses, but they, they, don't, they understand the covenant of Abraham. They understand the law of Moses. They, they could tell most Gentiles and even most Gentile ministers <clears throat> more about the functioning and the picture and types of the Old Testament law and the operation of the law and the priesthood back there. They've studied it over and over, and it's been handed down to them for years. <clears throat> God has held them in that. The reason I call that God's manifold wisdom is once God finishes making up the remainder of his bride, and once God uh, harvests the end of the Gentile world, there's not another people in the world that could keep the church from falling away except for the Jew. Everyone else will be just as much in darkness as the Gentiles were after the harvest of the Jewish world. But before God finishes his work with those of us down here in the end of the Gentile world, uh, if you remember now the rest of the story, Moses, I mean, Elijah tells Elisha, you stay here. I'm going to go to Bethel. No, he said, I can't leave. You can't leave me. I have to stay with you. Um, and that's really the feeling that anyone that gets a true vision of the body of Christ knows I cannot leave you people. I have to have what y'all have. I got to stay with you. I got to get this. There's not another people that's got it. And so then he tells him, he said, well, I have to go to Jericho, I believe it was. Uh, and so he said, you stay here. He said, no, I cannot stay here. I have to go with you. Uh, and that, that's just a picture to me that, you know, I've said this before. I told those in the Dominican Republic and many others. Here's how you know you really have a vision of the body of Christ. And that's when you can't leave it. When you know, I can't leave this. There's, there's nowhere else for me to go. <clears throat> Listen to me. Israel is Israel, no matter what condition they're in. I don't care if we're in a bad place. I don't care if we're going through rough times. This body's been through all kinds of things. It's still God's Israel, his elected people, and you can't, you got to stay in Israel. If you're called to be a part of that, you've got to stay with it. <clears throat> when you get a vision of this, you know this is something that I can't play with. This is something God's made me a part of that's his, a part of it, the calling of the people that are to be a part of his everlasting kingdom. Take another sip of that. Maybe I can get part of this cleared out of my throat. 
Um, so um, then he tells Elisha, he says, I've got to go. God wants me to go across Jordan. And he says, well, you stay here. He said, no, I cannot stay here. I have to go with you. So <clears throat> um, they, they go to Jordan's banks. He takes off his mantle, slaps the water with it. It rolls back on a heap, and they go across on dry ground. The picture in that is, is that the gospel, we're shod, our feet, our way is shod with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And God will give a ministry down here, the power to roll back. Jordan, uh, it's always, every time they cross Jordan, it was an overswelling of the banks because it was harvest time. And this is going to be harvest time. God's going to harvest this world. And when he finishes harvesting this world, he'll have a ministry that can keep you from being affected by the overswelling because, because Christianity is going to overswell with the beast system. That's a picture. That's a, it's a picture of how Jordan overflows its banks is because in the springtime, after the winter, all the snow, snow melts out of the mountain, runs down into the streams, and the streams all run down into Jordan, and it overswells its banks. That's during harvest time in the spring. You can believe when God comes back, it will be harvest time. It will be the latter rain. The spring rains were latter rains. The the early rain was fall rains in Israel. It's just the opposite of the way we think about it today. All right. So uh, the water rolls back. They go across on dry shod ground. In other words, God is not going to let anything hinder your feet that's been shod with the gospel be tainted with the muddy waters of Jordan or the mud, uh, you know, that you're not going to have to worry about getting muddy feet. Spiritually, I'm talking about. You're not going to have to worry about being painted with all of that. Uh, the, the temptations of the falsehood of the bee system. They went across on dry shod ground. On their way across, Elijah asked Elisha, said, what what do you want me to do for you? He says, I want, I want a double portion of what you have. Well, for a lot of years until I understood it, I thought he was asking to have twice as much as Elijah had. But, you know, in my studies in the word of God, I finally came to understanding. It was actually after I got to the body of Christ, I came to the understanding that a du the double portion is the firstborn's portion. That's the inheritance of the firstborn. And that's what he was asking for. I want exactly what you've got. You've got the portion. You've got the uh, portion of the firstborn. You've got that anointing. You've got that inheritance. And that's what I want. And so he said, well, you've asked for a hard thing. But if you see me when I'm caught up, you'll have it. Well, just as they reach the other side of Jordan, here comes a fiery chariot of horses running right at both of them, and it separates them. Right at that time, one winds up on one side of the chariot of horses, one on the other side. At that split second, Elijah's caught up into the heavens, and his mantle falls to the ground. Well, what he was saying in type there was not that it's not that the Jew is going to see us caught up into the sky. That's not going to happen. That's not that's that, that, that's not going to happen. That's not the way anyone in the early church was caught up into the bride. That's not how we'll be caught up. You'll be caught up in an overcoming life, caught up into a a heavenly 
place from second heaven. You'll get in second heaven before you get caught up into third heaven. But so uh, he was telling him, if you can, here's the type. If you can see me when I am, what causes me to be caught up as an overcomer into a heavenly realm, made an overcomer, a perfect overcomer of the Lord, when you can see that, take, if you can see that, then you will have the, the uh, inheritance of the firstborn. If you can come to a place where you can receive what it takes to be in that kind of catching away, catching up into this heavenly realm of an overcomer, not in a literal place in the sky, that's not, that, I, that, I don't think that is near as reasonable of a way to look at it is what I'm telling you. Uh, it didn't happen in the early church that way, the coming of the Lord and his second coming, it won't be any different. Um, so those chariot horses, you know, this is a time right when Armageddon is going to take place right at the end of the Jewish world when God makes up his bride. And Elisha never got his focus off. He was not, he, he didn't lose his focus because of what was transpiring that separated him or separated the people of those early Jewish ministers are not going to be separated from us by all of the judgment and all of the war in heaven that's going to be taking place at that time. They will, they're going to focus. They'll have that focus and they will get our mantle. When that mantle fell to the ground, it proves he got it because he walks over and picks up the mantle, <clears throat> walks over to Jordan and slaps the waters and says, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And the water rolled back on him. The lamb was again, the ground was dry shod. He walked across and you can read the rest of the story in the book of First Kings. He, he um, retraced Elijah's steps. So what I'm telling you, in that type, I can see where God is going to bring the Jew back. Um, let's look here in, in Hosea. Uh, the sixth chapter, the first verse, <clears throat> Hosea prophesies here, it says, come, let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn and he'll heal us. See, God, God tore them away because of their unbelief. He tore them away, separated them from the body of Christ and put them in darkness, in a hellish condition the rich man for 2000 years and he hath smitten and he'll bind us up after two days. That's 2000 years. Peter said a day with the Lord's is a thousand years and a thousand years is as a day. And he's, he's saying here after 2000 days, he will revive us. And the third day he'll raise us up. And, shall, and we shall live in his sight. Then we shall know if we follow on to know the Lord. He's going forth as prepared as the morning, and he'll come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain under the earth. <clears throat> in other words, the full here, I've got a, a complete season of harvest for the Jews. Tame olive branch grafted back in. And when they begin to return in the end of the Gentile world, God will fulfill his purpose in them in a similar way uh, that is harvest. So if we'll go from here to Romans, the 11th chapter. So I hope you're getting what I'm saying that <clears throat> um. Uh, 
Uh, I'll let you read. <clears throat> you can read the whole chapter. Paul's showing here that we're a wild olive branch grafted into the work of God. The olive, we're grafted into the, uh, to the olive tree. And they broke off. They're, God separates them even though they were a tame olive branch. But if we go down to <clears throat> verse 16 here, it says, for if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree, he's talking Gentiles here, the Romans, uh, he, this letter to the Romans, were grafted in among them. And when they partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree, boast not in the branches, but if thou boast, thou, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well, well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. And thou, if thou standest by faith, be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. <clears throat> Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell. Severity, but toward thee. Goodness, if thou continue in the goodness. Otherwise, thou also shall be cut off. He's telling them back there. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. Or if thou were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written, there shall come out of Zion and deliverer and shall turn away the ungodliness of Jacob. For this is my covenant and unto them which I shall take away when I shall take away their sins. So, um, so his God's, uh, I don't know where, where, where does it say that? They've already read the part where it says the gifts and callings were without repentance. What scripture is that? Here, right here. Uh, yeah, let's read this right here just a little bit more. <clears throat> Verse 28, as concerning the gospel, they're enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. For the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. For as ye in times past have not believed, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief, even so have these also now not believed that through your mercy, they may obtain mercy. For God hath concluded them all in unbelief that he might have mercy upon all. Oh, the depths and riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how searchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For whom hath known the mind of the Lord, or who has been his counselor, or who hath first given to him and it shall be recompensed to him again. So I'm, what I'm showing you is there God, here's how God's going to restore Israel. He's going to bring full-blooded Jews to the body of Christ. I, I think it'll take place here in America first. They'll come in this body. They'll receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They'll get this vision, and you'll see many of those Jewish men will be called to the ministry and they will be an Elisha ministry under this Elijah mantle. 
they'll get our mantle. It'll touch them. They will get this. They'll follow us through to the end when they see us caught up and the bride's made up. And let me, let me say this, no doubt in my mind that several of those Jews that come in early enough will make the bride. Just like some of the early Gentiles made the bride back there in the harvest of the Jewish world, men like the house of Cornelius, possibly, I would think, men uh, like Timothy, half Greek and half Jew, men that were uh, Gentiles under Paul's ministry early, I think there's no doubt some of those people made the bride. But you've got to understand, you know, when you start reading the seven, the letters to the seven churches in Asia, you realize that these Gentiles, there's many of them, they're, they're coming in all the time. I mean, the, the, the vast majority of the Gentiles that came in was after darkness came on the church and it fell away, but it was planted. It was planted sure and deep enough and steadfast enough that it came up and brought and, and brought what God intended for it to bring in this Gentile world, even after the dark ages and it lay dormant, the seed lay dormant for a time until the earth got close enough uh, to the sun. I should turn that around and say, well, that is what I'm saying, until the earth got close enough to God and God had to woo them to bring them there. Well, again, I'm telling you that God kept has kept the Jew in a great gulf in his both his, the, the wisdom and knowledge of God that's so unsearchable, his judgments and ways are past finding out, you know, but for most people, but the people of God is going to get it. Therefore, God is going to restore the Jew to the body of Christ. And a Jewish ministry is, again, I said, they're the only people. They're the only people because when they see this, they're going to get it way faster than we can get it because all of the Old Testament is going to explode in their minds. Once God opens their eyes, the Apostle Paul is a picture of that. The Apostle Paul was anti-Christ. He was against Christ. He, was, he put people in prison and jail and people were killed because of the Apostle Paul being so zealous against the body of Christ as a Pharisee, but when God knocked him down and God showed him who the Messiah really was and God opened his eyes and he didn't have a New Testament. Everything Paul taught was right out of the Old Testament. All the types, all of the scriptures that showed the coming of the Messiah and proving to the people that that's who he was. Jesus was the Messiah, I missed it. But now I, I'm I've made a turn. I know this is the Messiah, and I'm I'm doing his work now. I've entered his kingdom. <clears throat> That's going to happen to the Jew. God's held them in darkness for this very purpose. You say, well, you mean God just kept all those people where they couldn't make it? No. God knew they couldn't make it. They were unbelievers. They're, they were anti-Christ. But he, God's the one that has held them in the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, in his manifold wisdom to when he could touch them, that they could come forth and lead this world down through the millennial. Now, there'll be other ministers come in from other nations and other cultures of people, but the Jew will be first and they will be the leading ministry that will spearhead carrying this message and preventing the church from ever falling away. Um, I hope you are, I hope I'm making myself clear enough that you understand how I'm saying. Now, will, will Israel, the nation of Israel, will it be restored? I don't know. I can say it wouldn't surprise me because 
I think God's work among the Jews is going to be a great work. And I think America is going to be judged. And so I don't see God using America after Armageddon. Uh, so why wouldn't he use Israel? Why wouldn't that be the spearhead nation? But here again, our focus shouldn't be on a nation being restored as a nation. It should be understood that God's restoring a people that he's purposed to restore for the elect's sake. Their calling, God's not repented. He ain't changed what he's called them to do. And therefore, he's going to graft them back in. Even though they were unbelief, he's going to graft them back in to do this work in the end of the Gentile world and down through the millennial reign. So uh, I read you that scripture. I'll go back to it here one more time before we close in Revelations 1 and 7. Notice here, there's something put in here that's not in the New Testament in this way. Behold, he cometh with clouds, verse 7, Revelations 1. And every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of it. Um, here in Luke 3, 6, Jesus said this, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Well, look, our, let's see, that was, uh, yes, that was, was that John or was that Jesus? Yes, it was John. So, and every, all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Here, again, I'm just trying to give you making this point. When it says all flesh, well, all flesh did not see the salvation of God. So you got to understand how this is written. If you read it in Latin or the way it was written, it probably would mean, mean it to you this way, that everyone that sees, it, all flesh that actually sees the salvation of God will be saved. You know, in other words, those that God manifest himself to. Look at the throngs of people that rejected God back there. So all flesh, they saw God's salvation. They saw it manifested, but they didn't receive it. Not all flesh saw it. So uh, I'm just making the point there about all, just like Everyone, all they that pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth. Well, every I'll see, yes, they'll see the manifestation of God, but they're not going to all adhere to it. They all won't receive it. You know, you, you, you can't make that all, is the way we look at all, that every single person is going to be saved there. No, they weren't back there and they won't be down here. But the addition here, and they also which pierced him. That, that is significant. That those that pierced him, and those that pierced him is talking about the Jew. If you went to, uh, you know, we could probably go to, let's see if we can, in verse seven here. See if we can find a scripture too, and I'll close. That's talking about clouds. Uh, there is scriptures in. Here, Matthew 20, I mean, two. That, no, that's not, there is, a, there is Psalms though that shows that. Let's see if I can. Trying to find what there's there is Psalms. I, you know, I'm sorry that I didn't just write down all the scriptures. And these things come to my mind. <clears throat> Brother Painter, he can tell you he gets on the Zoom meetings at the Dominican Republic. And when I explain this to them, I've totally went about it probably a different way tonight because. 
I'm not talking about something I've got on notes that I'm trying. I'm just talking out of my heart, my mind of what, I, and I can explain it a lot of different ways. It just depends on how how I go about it or how it comes to my mind when I'm talking about it. I'm trying to find there are scriptures. If, if we look up pierced, we'd find it. Let's see if I can find it right quick. But I know you know that that's who that's talking about. However, here, the Psalms 22, 16, for the dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. Um, Zechariah, Zechariah 12 and 10. I'll pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplications, and they shall look on me whom they have pierced. I'm just trying to give you a few scriptures to show you that this talking about them, they, and who, whom they pierced, they also will see me, see the one that they pierced. <clears throat> so, uh, here they pierced his side in John 19, 34, when he was on the cross. Um, here in John 19, 37, it, it's referring to a scripture. And again, another scripture saith, they looked on him whom they pierced. Talks about a scripture that shows that not a bone would be broken, but another scripture. Is that uh, Psalms 22? Yes, right here. For dogs have compassed me, and an assembly of the wicked hath enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I think I read that a minute ago. But I, I'm just giving you, you know, scriptures. There, 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 all three are Psalms 22, 16, 17, Zechariah 12, 10, Revelation 1 and 7. So, <clears throat> Anyway, I'm hoping that I um, let me see here if I can get back to there. I quit screen sharing, so I hope uh, I hope I've said enough about it, at least to explain to you my position on the restoration of Israel, how it's going to take place. Yes, do you believe in the restoration of Israel, Brother Smith? Yes, I do. But I do not believe in it in a way that, you know, we're going to have, a, we're going to go over there and win that whole nation. That That's not what I see. I see the mantle of an Elijah ministry touching a Jewish, a Jewish boy, young man, that's probably going to be a younger group of Jews. It starts off that God's going to anoint and give them a vision of this and bring them into it. So I went just a bit over. Uh, to, so I gave you more than an hour. So you owe me. <laughs> <laughs> you can pay me back sometime later on. All right. Uh, I'll... Uh, Maybe before we go tonight, we can pray together like we always do. Um, we need to keep praying for Sister Crow here locally, Brother Bill Daniels, uh, Brother Ray Weaver and Susan, his wife, uh, Sister Durham's mother in Springfield, Missouri, or Republic there in the Springfield area. She's, she's getting older. And she certainly needs her prayers. You know, right now they're, you know, she's her health. She's 90. How old, Sister Durham? She's up uh, 90 years old or more. 91. 91. And so, uh, you know, Sister Durham, of course, and the siblings are having to make decisions how to take care of her. And so it's a time that they need to pray for. My daughter in law, Sister Cindy Smith certainly needs our prayers. Uh, she got something that they they're, they're doing tests on her. 
they they tested her today and they're going to do some more tests. They're trying to figure out her doctor thinks it could be her gallbladder. It's making her so sick. So that's what they're testing right now. But if you would, please pray for her. Uh, you know, she just lost her mother and then she's not been in good health. Um, Brother Keith Dodson's had a wreck and he still needs prayer. So remember him. Uh, what else? Can anybody else? Uh, of course, the Dominican Republic. Uh, I, I appreciate everyone to keep Brother Johnny Bud's works uh, on your prayer list. You know, anytime a leader and a man that is an overseer of works passes away, it's difficult. That change is difficult on those works. And they go through struggles, making adjustments. I've watched over the years, I've watched churches not make. I've watched them struggle so much that they didn't, they, it's difficult for them. And Brother Goss up in uh, Keswick, Canada's back in the hospital. And, uh, you know, he's uh, 80, how old is he, Sister McNabb? 86? 88. 88, yeah. I keep losing track of time. It just seems like it goes by so fast. Uh, I ought to be able to catch up because I, you know, in other words, I ought to realize I'm getting older too. So it, you know, I'm going to run along with the rest of them. But anyway, he certainly needs our prayers and the Keswick church, the people there, I appreciate them being on Bible study with us. And, uh, you know, we need to pray for those people up in that area because, uh, you know, he's 88 years old. And when you get up that age, you've pretty much seen your heyday as far as what you're going to accomplish. And, uh, you know, so they're in the midst of a change right now. So we need to certainly pray for them. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think of what else. Uh, Brother Lewis, this uh, pastor in Norfolk, Virginia, his little grandson has uh, got cancer, really needs uh, a touch I'm trying to think of who else all of us have needs in our churches and we you know the other day Sunday I asked for a show of hands of who had a a uh, unspoken request almost every hand in the building went up well I know you all have unspoken requests so and if someone wants to bring up a request, let me know so we can, we, we need to go ahead and go to prayer here. All right, let's all just turn your mics on. And, you, you know, I see all of these little microphones that are all red. We need to get them all turned on so we can pray together. It seems like to me it helps when we hear one another. Pray together. And... Uh, Yes, oh, Lord. Let's pray here tonight. Oh, God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your Lord. Thank you. 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 Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, 
God be mindful. God help us to know how to work with you. Thank 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 you.